YouTube, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna be demonstrating a mid fade haircut with slight texture on top. So if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys hit that sub button guys. To start off the video, we're first gonna fix the bulk that's right here at the parietal ridge area around the crown. It was really bothering me. So just to have a cleaner base, just cleaner work, I just went in with my foreguard with the lever open. So just think of the foreguard as the base of the cut. It's the highest guard that we're gonna use for the whole haircut. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna basically blend out that hard line that you guys see there below the four and a half. That's the three guard with the lever open. So now closing closing the lever, this creates the three guard. And we're gonna go about halfway through and just flick out towards the top of the four and a half. So we wanna make sure that all of this work is organized. This is a two guard with the lever closed. And we're hitting that guideline right there. You guys can see it's already almost blending out. Then we open up the lever. So depending on what you guys want to do, you guys can start with the lever open or closed, just depending on your preference. Now that we have our work organized, let's go in with, with our wall seniors right there at the temple of the head. We're going to close the lever and create our first guideline. So we want to do that on one side of the head and replicate it on the other side to make sure that both sides are even. And we're going to aim this fade towards the back of his occipital bone. The occipital bone is a bone that protrudes in the back of the head. So everybody has a different size shaped head. So you want to make sure that you guys are adjusting accordingly to your client. So you guys can have a fade that suits your client's head shape and also give your client what he wants. Once you guys have successfully organized your work and now set your first guideline, the next step is to open up our lever with our wall seniors. We're going to set a one finger guideline that proceeds on top of that guideline that we just set. Make sure that every single guideline is going to be identical to this guideline because the first guideline sets the foundation for your whole haircut. Your goal as a barber in the first couple steps is just to keep your work as organized as possible, as clean as possible, so you guys can set some really nice guidelines so you guys can be able to erase them. In this step, we're using our number one guard with the lever open. We're setting another one finger guideline on top of the half. And our work just looks really clean, really nice. If you guys can do this throughout your whole haircut, I promise you guys, you guys are gonna be able to get better through time, just having your work clean. And right here, we're gonna do the same thing. Number two guard with the lever open. And I put my finger there as a reference for you guys to know that this is a one finger guideline. And now you guys can see the levels of the guidelines and the coloring of the fade as well. Once you guys hit that two and a half guard or almost a three guard, your fade starts to get darker. So that's what a fade is. It basically is, is, is a transition from your sharpest clipper or trimmer, your sharpest tool to the highest number on top, which right here we're, we're using our number three guard with the lever open and we're flicking out. And now let's do the same thing using the four guard with the lever open. You guys see in the beginning of the video, I did these steps, but just because I have like, I'm like OCD, I just wanted to run through those steps. And I was thinking about just deleting the clips, but I wanted you guys to see kind of how I work in terms of my workflow. This is what works for me and it keeps me more organized throughout my whole fading process. Once you guys are done with setting your guidelines, your work should look similar to this. So then we can start the blending process now. We're gonna grab our number 1.5 guard and put our lever in a 75% position. The first couple of steps that we did in this video, it was all about organization and setting guidelines. Now what we're doing is a 75% lever open to close method. The lever method just basically tells you what to do. It tells you to open to three quarters, then to close it as we keep going lower into the blend. Of course, guys, you guys don't wanna be closing your lever and going higher into the fade. That's gonna push your fade a lot higher than it's supposed to. Just stay within the levels of your lever and also don't rush the process of this step I used to make the mistake of just just trying my, my, my best to just leave this step because it's boring to me. Like you really can't see a difference, but honestly, the more that you hit it, the more that it, it'll blend out. So don't rush that and don't get frustrated if it doesn't just blend out the first time around. Once you guys run through those steps, guys, the next lever method is gonna be middle, open, closed. What that means is that we're gonna put our lever in the middle and attack the guideline in the middle, then open our lever and go a tiny bit higher into the fade. So then we can now close the lever 
hit the beginning of the guideline and rinse and repeat this fading process so you guys can get rid of this side of the guideline i like working in in fade zones so basically from the ear to the temple of the head so we can transition and in the back I'm gonna try out a different fading method. I'm gonna open up the lever just to reorganize our work, redefine the area so we know exactly how far up we can blend out with our guideline. Now we're gonna close the lever and do the close to open lever method. Hit the beginning of the guideline and now open it a little bit and we're gonna go a tiny bit higher into the guideline. And we're gonna keep repeating that process until our lever is completely open. The reason why I wanted to demonstrate two different lever methods on different sides of the head was just because to, to demonstrate to you guys that it doesn't matter what lever method you guys use. What matters is that you guys respect the method. What I mean by that is if you guys are doing the, if you guys are starting in the middle, hit the guideline in the middle and just proceed that consistency throughout the whole fade. So then we can blend that line out and get to this step with the one guard with the lever closed. We're doing close to open in this step we're blending out the guideline that we that we created with the one guard with the lever open. If you guys are paying attention, you guys can see that every single time I open the lever, I go a tiny bit higher into the fade until my lever is completely open and I'm hitting the full thing again. In this video, I only demonstrated about one time. So in real life time, I probably did the method about three, four times before moving on to another guard right here i'm just redefining that area again doing close to open i started in one side of the head then moved to the other side of the head just so everything can be organized you guys can see how it's softening but it's not fully blended we're going to attach our 0.5 guard now and work you guys can see that was a one finger guideline and we're going to do about half of that finger that's our fading room that we have to go from the closed lever position to the fully open lever position. Don't go all the way to the top using the 0.5 guard, you're gonna end up pushing your fade. So just stay very consistent and move and fade in areas of the head. Once that guideline is completely blended, guys, you guys can see how organized our work is. We're just working step by step by step. And earlier we tried to blend out this line. There's still a slight smudge that I want to just detail. We're doing the same method, the three quarters to closed. If you guys ever encounter problems with blending out the beginning of any guideline, I highly suggest that you guys go back a step. So that's what I'm doing. I grabbed the one guard and I opened up the lever and I started flicking out using, you can't, you guys can't really see it from this angle, but I'm only using the left side of my blade. Once we've corrected our work, we can go now to the most important part of the whole haircut is creating that ball transition, getting rid of that zero line. We're going to flip our clipper upside down and hit it right there on top of that guideline on top of that bulk. So your clipper is a lot sharper in this position. So just make sure your clippers are properly set to then go to our next step with our babyless skeletons and repeat that process. But you want to go a little bit lower now. A tiny bit lower so then we can flip our trimmer and go a tiny bit lower again so we're just getting closer and closer to that bulk to then just erase it completely with my trimmer my gamma hitters that are not zero gap i like calling these my soft trimmers and this just is a this is able to give me a good guide a good visual of what area i'm supposed to bald out because as beginning barbers we all just struggle with that zero line we don't know how high to go with the shaver so stick to this technique guys if you guys have trouble with that zero line the bottom bulk now that we've alleviated just that volume of hair with our babyless skeletons let's go ahead and shave that area everything below my finger right there we're flicking out towards my finger you guys can see how blurry this is coming out and we want to repeat the process on the other side of the head for the scissoring part of this haircut first we want to start off by dampening the hair grab our comb wires part comb and we're going to create a vertical section right there from the left corner of his head the section is about a finger thick a finger and a half we want to cut about an inch from the top. My client didn't want a whole lot cut from the top. So once we figure, once we set that basically our first guide, we want to do the same thing and separate the half of his head basically and connect 
that guideline to the other proceeding guideline and repeat the process on this side of the head. And now for these horizontal cuts, guys, we did vertical guidelines and then we cut everything vertically across the head. And now we want to go horizontal to make sure that everything is nice and even. This is just a very simple way on how to trim the hair on top. If you guys are beginning, this is going to be something that you guys can apply. My advice to anybody trying to master the lineups, always start at the corners, guys. If there's a C cup area, start at the corner, then connect it at the top right corner. Do the left corner now then do top left corner detail it with the straight razor if you, your client wants enhancement application just apply the enhancement guys for this video i just wanted to show you guys demonstrate that i do apply enhancements sometimes to my haircuts and for the texturizing powder make sure you guys move the hair and apply it within the scalp then massage it and create the texture that you guys want for your client and after guys, so sometimes there's some little stray hairs that you guys can get rid of. This is just the detail part of the haircut. This is gonna separate your work from everybody else's. Take the extra time and use that pinky as a tripod so you guys won't mess up the hair. This is the before guys, and this is the after. A step-by-step -step mid fade haircut tutorial for you guys I appreciate all the constant support just you guys liking and commenting on my content just means the world to me guys I would appreciate if you guys have not subscribed to the channel hit that sub button and I'll catch you guys next week for more haircut tutorials peace